Hello and welcome to Queens of God, the place where women are inspired, empowered and lifted every day. I'm Sister Nancy. How are you doing today? I'm sure you're doing good. I'm sure you're waxing strong and producing results. I want to ask you a question right now. Do you know that God loves you so much? Do you know that he sees your true value? And he created you. I want to read a scripture to you from the Bible. And this scripture is John 3.16. And it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise the Lord. You know, this scripture is very powerful. I'm sure you've heard this scripture, John 3.16, a lot. Maybe people have preached it to you, you know, in the streets, or you've heard it in church, on TV. I'd like to break it down for you, you know. This scripture is emphasising on the love of God. You know, people don't know the extent of God's love. God's love is big, it's intense, it's wide, you know, it contains everyone, <laughs> all his creation, so long as you are his creation, his child, his daughter, he made you, you're wrapped up in his love, especially you, you know, this scripture sometimes people might think is talking about God so loved the world of things, you know, material things. These things are for our use. He doesn't love those things as much as he loves us. He doesn't love your house <laughs> as much as he loves you. You know, your mobile phone, your TV. He loves you as a person. He created you in his image to do great works. You know? He loves you so much that he gave Jesus Christ, you know, to take your place, to die in your place. And if you believe in him, Jesus Christ, the son of God, the scripture says that you should not perish, but have everlasting life. That you should not suffer, you should not die, but you should have eternal life, everlasting life. This is the promise of God to every man, every woman, every child. Jesus is a solution to sin. He's a solution to your worries. He's a solution to your lack, to your sadness, to your depression. Jesus Christ, he came to take your place. That you don't have to, you know, pay for your own sins. You know, sin came into the world as a result of Adam's disobedience in the Garden of Eden. But Jesus Christ was sent as a solution to take away sins. And anyone that believes in Jesus Christ, anyone that believes in this sacrifice and accepts the love of God, you come into Christ, you, you enter the kingdom of God. A new reality in God. You receive Christ. His spirit becomes supplanted in your human spirit. And you have the spirit of Christ in you. You begin to desire good things. He said, a new heart I will give you. You know? In replace of the old heart, I'll give you a new heart with new desires. You desire to please God. You desire to do the things of God. You desire to pray. Everything changes. And that's what it means to be born again. If you've never heard of, you know, the term being born again, that's what it means to be born again. Some people misinterpret that term. And they make it sound like it's a bad thing, being born again. I don't want to be born again. All them born again people. But to be born again is beautiful. It's between you and God. It's a transformation of your spirit. Christ comes to live in you. You desire the things of God. You desire good things now. Maybe you're going in the wrong direction. Hang with the wrong people. You know, your life is going the way of destruction. But Jesus 
has come. He's finished his works, you know? He was dead, buried, resurrected, and he raised. He was raised. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He said, greater work shall you do. But he's your solution today. If you haven't given your heart to Christ, if you haven't, you know, said to yourself, you know what, I want to change. I'm tired of this life. I'm tired of this sadness. I'm tired of this anger. I'm tired of this, um, you know, life of sin. I, don't, I can't seem to be doing things right. He's giving you a new life. And this new life, this eternal life, everlasting life, is the life of God. <laughs> and the life of God is a life of success. It's a life of victory. It's a life of health. This is the promise that God, you know, has given to the world. He's given a promise. I promise you that if you believe in my son, you will have eternal life. You will have a life of health. You will have a life of success. You will have a life of victory. You will have a life of joy, of wealth, abundance, of riches. This is the promise. This is the gospel. This is good news. The gospel is not bad news. You know, I'm not preaching no bad news to you. <laughs> I'm preaching good news right now. That if you give your heart to Christ. I remember the first time, you know, I gave my heart to Christ. I still remember that experience. I cried. And you know what made me give my heart to Christ? When I remember it, I always have tears of joy because... What made me give my heart to Christ was the love that I found out about. I found about his love, found out about his love, that he loved me so much, you know. It doesn't matter what anybody thought about me, what I'd done. I found out that he already made way for that. He already done something about it. He already done something about Whatever I could think about myself, my mistakes, he's already done something about it. And that was, that's Jesus, that's bringing Jesus. I found out about his love for me, how he sees me, his value that he has for me. How valuable I am to him. And my heart melted. I was like, wow, nobody can love me this much just for who I am. The person that I am. I'm, I'm not perfect. I've been doing wrong. I've been, you know. This was in 2000 and 2006 I gave my heart to Christ. And now we're in 2016. So it's been a while. But I still remember the love that, that moved me. Propelled me to give my heart to Christ. I accepted Jesus as my Lord and my personal saviour. I said thank you Lord. And every time after that. He was my confidence. If I didn't feel good about myself, if people weren't talking well of me still, you know, I knew that God loved me. And I knew that I would ch things would change in time. But already, once you give your heart to Christ, there's a change. Automatically, you enter the kingdom of God. Automatically, God becomes your father. God becomes alive in your life. And most importantly, Christ, the spirit of Christ becomes supplanted in you. So divinity comes in you. Glory to God. Now I want to give you the opportunity right now. If you want to give your heart to Christ. If you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and your personal saviour. This is the opportunity. Maybe you've been waiting for an opportunity to give your heart to Christ. But you didn't have one. Or you weren't ready. But don't leave it. Don't leave it for too long. Always take the opportunity to give your heart to Christ because he's the one that died for you. The devil has another plan for you. He has a plan of destruction upon your life. But God's promise, as I read out, is not for you to perish. It's not for you to be, you know, to die. To experience destruction or lack or sickness. That's not God's plan. I want to read a scripture to you. And this scripture is 3 John 1, 2. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. 
This is God's will for you. It's his wish. Like I said, the devil wishes that you perish. The devil wants you to die. The devil wants you to fail. He wants you to be sick. He wants you to lose. He wants you to be discouraged. He wants you to be disadvantaged. You know, that is where he will kill you. He wants you. That's, that's the devil, okay? God's will for you. Third John 1, 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosperous. Huh. Did you get that? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosperous. This is God's will. This is God's desire. This is what God wants for you as his creation, as his child. I'm going to lead you to Christ right now. I'm going to give you this opportunity. I'm going to share more about my testimony in more videos of mine because I've got a lot to talk about concerning my personal salvation, you know, and what I've experienced as a result of giving my heart to Christ. A glory life, the best life, at peace. I'm at peace in God. I know that all things work out for me, work out for my good, you know. I know that and I know who I am in Christ. But it starts with giving your heart to Christ. You need to accept Jesus. Believe in the Son of God and accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Saviour. And then the journey begins. The good life begins. Praise God. So I'd like to read a scripture, the final scripture of salvation. The message of salvation to all people. Romans 10, chapter 9. Sorry, Romans 10 verse 9 Romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shall be saved glory to God verse 10 says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made Onto salvation. I'm going to read that again. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. Glory to God. So I'm going to say some words. I'm going to pray a prayer. And I want you to repeat after me. And this is a prayer of salvation. So you repeat these words after me. If you want to give your heart to Christ right now, wherever you are, you're watching Queens of God right now. And I'm Sister Nancy. And I'm going to be doing a prayer of salvation. So that you can give your heart to Christ. So you can have a new life. You know, free from sins. A new life in him. A glorious life. A victorious life. Joyful life. Rich life. Successful life. And a healthy life, most importantly. And remember that when you're a child of God. You're superior to the devil. He cannot stand against you successfully. So repeat these words after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die for me. Today, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead for my sake. Right now, I receive eternal life into my spirit and I receive the forgiveness of my sins thank you Lord for loving me so much I am now a child of God and I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus thank you father for saving me I now walk 
in the consciousness of my new life in Christ Jesus today. Amen. Wow. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. Well done. You know, that's the best decision you've ever made, giving your heart to Christ. And I'll share some more testimonies with you in another video, you know. Well done. Congratulations to you for giving your heart to Christ. You've been catapulted from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Congratulations, you know. I'll be talking more also in another video about what it is to be born again, what it means, what life you have. So enjoy your day. Enjoy being a Christian, a child of God. Stand bold. Be bold about it. Be confident about it. You know, enjoy this new life. So in the meantime, stay up and stay in charge. For you're a queen of God. Congratulations. God bless you.